the Prophet ﷺ in his beautiful teaching style. One day he approaches Abdullah ibn Umar عنهما, the son of Umar ibn Khattab. And Abdullah at the time was a teenager. The Prophet ﷺ approaches him and he says, وضع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يديه على منكبي The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم approached me and he put both his hands on my shoulders. I want you to visualize this. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم approaches this teenager in this friendly, beautiful manner. And this raises his curiosity and interest. And it creates a relationship. It creates an atmosphere where I have this connection, this bond with this teacher, with my teacher. وضع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يديه على منكبي وقال كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب أو عابر سبيل. Like words of wisdom, Allah words of wisdom that hit straight, they go straight into your heart. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says to this teenager. Be in this world, be in this life like a stranger or like a wayfarer, like a traveler. That's it. That's it. Very simple words. And this teenager takes these words and he transforms them into a lifestyle that he lives by for the rest of his life. Just a very simple statement. كُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا كَأَنَّكَ غَرِيبٌ أَوْ عَابِرُ سَبِيلٌ be in this life like a stranger or like a wayfarer. Because that's what you truly are in this world and in this life. So Abdullah ibn Umar himself, later on in his life, he comments, he mentions this story, then he comments on it. قَالَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ عُمَرْ إِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الْمَسَاءَ وَإِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الصَّبَاحِ وَخُذْ مِنْ صِحَّتِكَ لِمَرَضِكَ so he transforms this into a way of life and then he puts it in his own words. Later on, Abdullah ibn Umar speaks about this incident. Then he adds a commentary. He adds some kind of personal explanation. And he says, when you wake up in the morning, don't expect to finish that day. Don't expect to reach the end of that day alive. That means be ready for death. And if you reach the evening, the end of the day, do not expect to wake up in the morning the following day. Then he says, and take from the time of your health for the time of your illness and weakness. And take from your life for your death. He means basically, seize the high times in your life when you are healthy, you're strong, you have your senses, and you have all your resources at your disposal, utilize this because when you are ill and sick and incapable, you can't do much. So seize these beautiful opportunities. When you have the energy, you have the youth, you have the focus, you have the power, you have the time. And take from your life for your death. That means use this life, seize this opportunity that we call life to do enough things, to build enough credit with Allah. So after your death, you have paved your way. You have a, your way paved to paradise. So he's summarizing what the meaning of this life has become to him after hearing this advice from the Prophet ﷺ. And this advice is not only directed to Ibn Umar. It's a universal advice to everyone. And it's not something that tries to take us away from life. Like some people like to interpret this hadith in a, in a very negative manner, in a way that takes them away from life, away from reality. On the contrary, everything in the instructions of Islam and the, in the Quran and the instructions of the Prophet ﷺ, you will find that it directs you to live life fully. Live life fully. Get the full experience of life. And the full experience of life as it really is can only be ethical and according to principles. Those who take life in the wrong direction are abusing it, they're not using it. So the Prophet ﷺ gives him two options and this shows as well the space that Islam gives us. The Prophet ﷺ gives him two options. Be in this life like a gharib, a stranger or a wayfarer like a traveler and there's a difference between two. Although there are similarities. But the Prophet ﷺ acknowledges that 
one way or one example might not suit you. So another example would suit you because there are personal differences. And it's unfortunate that sometimes we have devout Muslims, people who really want to do good, but they want to get everyone to follow their example and their specific understanding when there is more space in Islam in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet So someone knows one thing and they want everyone to follow that just because he or she is unaware that there is also something else. There are other pathways within the framework of Islam. And this is why you find some differences among the companions of the Prophet So be in this life like a stranger. Who is a stranger? A stranger is someone who lives in a country that's not his home. He stays and he resides in this country, but he knows at some stage he's going to go back home. That's a gharib, a stranger. So when he lives in that country, he recognizes that's not my home. That's not my home. That's not where I belong. I'm going to go back to my country. I'm going to go back home because that's where I belong. But I came here to do some kind of business. I came here to study. I came here for medication. I came here for any purpose and any reason. But I know my family is back home. My house is back home. My people are back home. My memories are back home. My future is back home. Everything is back home. So we are in this life are strangers. Because essentially we humans, the reality of the human being is their heart, is their soul. And this is why the soul feels as a stranger here. It knows it belongs to the world of the unseen. We humans at some level in our fitrah, in our hearts, we know that we are created for the mercy of Allah in Jannah. So we want to go there. And this is why one of the scholars of the Muslims, Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, he says in, in some poetry lines that are very powerful where he talks about the Islamic aqeedah and the Islamic creed and belief. He says, He's saying, come on, let's move on. Let's, move, let's go back home. Let's get ourselves ready to go make the journey back home to where we belong, to where we originally came from. Because these are our, this is our first home. This is our, our first home. This is where we belong. And there should be your eternal abode. That is the plan for you to go back there and live the rest of your time there, which is eternal. But he says we are captives now to our enemy because shaitan managed to get us out of paradise. We are captive to shaitan. So we're going through the test of this life. So he's then wondering, are we going to make it back home or are we going to stay stuck? So that's why we are strangers in this life. Truly as a Muslim, we don't belong. But that doesn't mean I don't engage with life. I engage with life fully. And I build something in this life and I have a contribution and I worship my Lord and I connect to people and I'm good to others. And I, and I have something to present and something to contribute and something to give and something to offer. And I have a lot to learn and I have a lot to do to grow as well. This is how the life of a Muslim should go. But yet I still see my final destination. So I see everything in this life as an open field, as an open opportunity for me to engage with, to learn from, to grow with, to build my faith more, to build my knowledge more, to build my wisdom more, to help people more, to offer others more, to create more contribution, to make this world a better place. Because all of this builds assets for me with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the very nature that Allah designed me according to. That's why we humans have this belief in helping others and in creating a contribution. That's when you see someone who's contributing, you feel the sense of jealousy and envy. You want to be there. And sometimes your heart aches if you're not reaching your full potential. And sometimes some tears roll down your cheek because you know, I want to do this. Because I'm designed for this. That's our fitrah. So that, that's what it means to be a stranger. I'm here, but my heart is in paradise. 
But I don't disengage from life. I don't run away from life. I don't hide from whatever happens in this life. I don't bury my head in the sand and let all the problems accumulate over me. Because if I do this, I won't be able to worship Allah properly. But if you can't materialize this, if you can't go through this life with this kind of attitude, the Prophet ﷺ gave another way. And it might be harder for some people, but it might be easier for, for others. Be like a wayfarer. A wayfarer is someone who travels, keeps traveling, traveling. He never settles in one place. He travels from one city to another, from one country to another. He's a traveler, keeps traveling through the world. He never settles. He never buys a house. And he might sometimes sleep in the street, in the open. And he, he doesn't buy any of the daily needs of a human being or the, 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 the needs of someone who is settled. He doesn't buy furniture. He doesn't buy stuff in the kitchen. He doesn't buy any, any, anything like that. Why? Because he's, he keeps moving. He keeps moving and he wants to keep his burden light. So that's a wayfarer. So that's another way, another attitude to go through this life. If you find being a stranger is not for you, maybe a wayfarer is for you. And let's admit it, there are people who have this in them. They don't want to engage so much in life. They grow and they prosper more when they are by themselves. More when they mind their own business. More when they focus on their small niche. And they go through this life quietly. And that's how they achieve and contribute. So the Prophet ﷺ recognizes this variety in human beings. So he's giving two different attitudes to life. And Ibn Umar anhu, he understood this very well. And he just took one lesson that could be shared by everyone. He said, make sure because both of these metaphors give you the very strong indication and the message that you don't belong here. You're not created for this world. You're not going to live in this world forever. One day you will leave. One day you will depart and you will leave everything behind. So Islam teaches us to be future oriented because that's your real future. And life doesn't end with death. We know that death is just a transition from one stage to the other. But while we're here on this planet, in this earth, while we're living this life, Allah has given us a gift that he, has, he hasn't given to other creatures. And that's the gift of choice. The gift, the gift of choice. We can choose how to be. We can choose how to live. We can choose how to deal with this life. We can choose either to do good or to do bad. We can choose to be ethical and principled and obedient to Allah. Or you, we can choose to be evil and bad and disrespectful and disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have the choice. Allah has given us this ability to make a choice. But once death comes upon you, there is no more choice. The game of choice is over. It's over, but the consequences stop.